please please accept my humble obeisances dear devotees all glories to Srila Prabhupada all glories to our beloved Gurudev and it is such a delight for me to be with you all once again my humble obeisances to each and every one of you thank you so much for joining this call today I would like to speak on this particular verse of the 11th chapter of Bhagavad Gita verse number 33 I've uh, briefly referred to this verse recently in one of the classes where I quoted some lines of the purport, but today I thought this is a really nice verse to go into in depth because it's so beautifully summarizes the whole mission of Krishna consciousness. That's my humble opinion. So I chose this one. I hope it will enliven you also. So let us begin with the invocation prayers. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirae. Nashta Praeshwa Badreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Bhagavati Uttamash Loke Bhaktir Bhavati Nashtiki. So this verse is the universal form of the Lord. Arjuna, after speaking to Krishna and listening to Krishna, finally he says, I wish to see this universal form of yours, my dear Lord. And Krishna replies, he says, you cannot see me with your present eyes. I will give you divine eyes so that you can see this vision because this vision is very difficult to behold. And there Krishna shows his Virat Roop, his universal form where universes, galaxies, planets, hills, mountains, so many living entities and Arjuna is bewildered, so many arms, so many legs, so many eyes, so many mouths, so many, uh, uh, you know, the whole manifestation and scorching fire blazing on all sides and he's trembling and he's offering obeisances again and again. And uh, he's asking the Lord so many questions. So we are at that point, very interesting point. So the verse goes like this. Tasmatva muttishta yashola basva. Jitva Shatrun Bhumshwa Rajyam Samridham Mayai Vaite Nihata Purvameva Nimitta Matram Bhavya Savya Sachin. And the translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Therefore, get up, prepare to fight and win glory, conquer your enemies, and enjoy a flourishing kingdom. They are already put to death by my arrangement. And you, O Sabya Sachi, can be but an instrument in the fight. Purple. Sabya Sachin refers to one who can shoot arrows very expertly in the field. Thus, Arjun is addressed as an expert warrior capable of delivering arrows to kill his enemies. Just become an instrument. Nimitta Matra. This word is also very significant. The whole world is moving according to the plan of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Foolish persons who do not have sufficient knowledge think that nature is moving without a plan. And all manifestations are but accidental formations. There are many so-called scientists who suggest that perhaps it was like this or maybe like that, but there is no question of perhaps and maybe. There is a specific plan being carried out in this material world. What is this plan? This cosmic manifestation is a chance for the conditioned souls to go back to Godhead, back to home. As long as they have the domineering mentality which makes them try to lord it over material nature, they are conditioned. But anyone who can understand the plan of the Supreme Lord and cultivate Krishna consciousness is most intelligent. The creation and destruction of the cosmic manifestation are under the superior guidance of God. Thus, the battle of Kurukshetra was fought according to the plan of God. Arjun was refusing to fight, but he was told that he should fight in accordance with the desire of the Supreme Law. Then he would be happy. If one is in full Krishna consciousness and his life is devoted to the Lord's transcendental service, he is perfect. Om Agyanati Mirandasya Gnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha 
श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदाय ददा स्वादाति Uh, for my humble obeisances to all the assembled Vaishnavas, humbly requesting that you bless me, you mercifully shower your sweet mercy on me, that I may do justice to the service that has been given to me by Guru Maharaj to give class. So, what is Krishna saying? Because Arjun is so filled with trepidation, anxiety. Uh, misplaced compassion, sorrow, anguish, hurt, pain, and he's saying, "I'm not going to fight. I don't want to fight. Even if I win the whole world, what is the use? Because I'll be losing all my loved ones. And then what will happen to all the women and children?" And he gives a whole list of reasons, isn't it, why he is not going to fight? But he forgets that there is a plan of the Lord. <laughs> It is Krishna's plan. that these demoniac evil kauravas who have used up the kingdom should be finished and righteous rule should be established so arjuna is doing and thinking according to his own calculations which is based on the bodily concept of life but he now is beginning to realize that krishna has a plan and his whole mood changes from that of a equal he previously he was treating krishna as an equal but now he says shishya steham shadim twam mam twam twam prapanna i am your surrendered disciple please instruct me so now the relationship changes to disciple and spiritual master so now krishna is giving him revelation after revelation and explaining to him that they have already been finished by my arrangement they are already put to death you simply have to fight as my instrument you are simply carrying out the action for me for my because i desire it so krishna explains all this and he says stop dithering <laughs> stop being a wimp get up <laughs> prepare to fight and win glory conquer your enemies and enjoy a flourishing kingdom they are already put to death by my arrangement and you can only be an instrument so this is a very very important point because arjun is a very skillful archer in fact he is considered the most skillful of all the pandavas and kauravas in the skill of archery that means he is an expert at shooting bows and arrows so just like arjun each of us shila prabhupad says krishna has given a talent to each and every one of us and if you use that talent in the service of krishna your life will become successful so each and every one of us has been created by krishna and given certain skills certain abilities and they are meant to be used in the service of the lord and when we do that then we are, our whole service becomes pleasing our life becomes pleasing our life becomes service to the lord because that's that's our dharma that's who we are jivera swarupa nitera krishna das so here Sabya Sachin refers to one who can shoot arrows very expertly. So, a humble attempt as we begin devotional service and slowly try to understand what is my service, how can I serve nicely, is to slowly perfect that service. That means we become very expert in that service. Maybe my service is making garlands for the Lord. Let's say, and I begin by learning how to what is the length of the garland, what kind of flowers to be used. what is the size of the garland depending on the size of the deities what colors are the deities going to wear tomorrow so therefore what colors am i then what colors am i must choose to make the garland slowly it's not just a garland it's a meditation it's a meditation and you start thinking how the gopis must be making garlands in the spiritual world how beautifully they must be making the garlands let me try my level best today to make a beautiful garland for the lord you may think it's just a simple little thing like a garland but everything in krishna consciousness is transcendental you may be cleaning the temple floor you may be making a garland you may be cooking for the deities or you may be a very big leader managing big big projects but the mood is humble servitorship 
So the littlest person, the biggest person, we are all the same servants. <laughs> like Hanuman and the little ant. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Every little service, if done with full heart, with full sincerity, with full devotion, is so pleasing to Krishna. It all depends on our mood. Krishna doesn't care how big you are, how small you are, how well connected you are, how wealthy you are, how educated you are, how this and he doesn't. He only looks at your heart. How much love is there? How much devotion is there? And so we want to bring out more and more of the love and devotion, which is actually inherent in our hearts. So Krishna is explaining to Arjun, you just become an instrument for me. This is also very significant, as Srila Prabhupada says. This whole world is moving according to the plan of the Lord, but foolish speculators, the Naradhmas, the Mudhas, the Rascals, the Maya Paharita Jnanas, those whose knowledge has been stolen by Ill illusion, the Asurim Bhava Asritaha, those who are demoniac, they do not understand. They say, oh, everything is by chance. Nothing is by chance. The devotee knows very well that the hand of the Lord is behind every single thing. Not even a blade of grass can stir without the sanction of the Lord. So foolish persons, what do they know? They just come up with their own mental speculations or their own preconceived ideas or even their prejudices and biases and their upbringing and so on. So they have no idea. There are so many scientists, as Prabhupada said, they read reams and reams of articles in all kinds of publications, in so many journals, and this and that, you know, it could be this, it could be that, it may be this, it may be that, you know, maybe this is the hypothesis behind it. It's all conjecture, all guesswork, all speculation. But we are not interested in wasting our time with all this. We are taking the knowledge, our samardha. That means it is not man-made. It is coming from Krishna. It is perfect. That is why we are reading the sacred scriptures such as Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrit, and all the wonderful books that Srila Prabhupada has given us. So we do not want to waste our time in mental speculation. We want to take the knowledge as it is. This is Raja Vidya. This is not Shilpa Vidya. Shilpa Vidya will help you get by. <laughs> put food on the table, put clothes on your back and pay the bills, but it will not help you get back to Godhead. For that, you need Raja Vidya. Raja Vidya, Raja Guyam, Pavitra Midam Uttamam, uh, 9.2, uh, Satya Bhama. Will you pull, please pull that up for us? Pratyakshavagam, Pratyakshavagam, Dharmam, Susukam, Kartama, Vyayam. So it's such a beautiful uh, explanation of this wonderful knowledge. This knowledge is the key of education, the most secret of all secrets. It is the purest knowledge. And because it gives direct perception of civilization, it is the perfection of religion. It is everlasting and it is joyfully performed. So in Krishna consciousness, nothing is by force. Everything is by love. So you choose what service you want to do. You choose how many times a week you want to do it. You choose when you want to do it. When means in accordance with the DT schedule or whatever the... But you are... You can choose the services in such a way that you can do your home duties, your work duties, your recreation nicely and engage in devotional service. That's what I mean when I say nothing is by force, everything is by love. And as we do it, we begin to get, we begin to get a sweet taste for that particular service. We begin to actually relish doing that service. And then we start trying to make it more and more expert, more and more perfect. You know, it's like uh, every service, even though it may seem very simple, has potential for great expertise in it. A simple offering, a simple garland, a simple uh, outfit, whatever it may be you may be doing, you have the potential to shine in that particular area of expertise. And that's what Krishna wants. Krishna wants us to shine, whatever little bit our service may be. Shine in what sense? Shine in the sense of doing our best, doing our best, putting our whole heart in. And according to the level of our surrender, Krishna rewards us. Ye yatha maam prapadyante tam sataiva bhajam yaham. Srila Prabhupada explained, if you are 2% for Krishna, Krishna is 2% for you. If you are 50% for Krishna, Krishna is 50% for you. 
If you're 100% for Krishna, Krishna is 100% for you. We want Krishna to be 100% on our side, isn't it? So we want our surrender to increase more and more. We want to give up all the things which are holding us back. Holding on to what? We are holding on to <laughs> such actually silly things, you know, which really don't matter. We need to actually run after Krishna's lotus feet and try to grab that and hold on to that. Okay, let's get back to the verse, Satya Bhama. Thank you. If you can take us back, please. So deep three. Yes. So why are we engaging in all this devotional service? Why are we doing all this chanting, hearing, etc.? We are trying to situate ourselves more and more and more in the spiritual energy because that is the reality. That is where we belong, actually. Not this material world of birth, disease, old age, and death. And this is the Lord's plan, my dear brothers and sisters. Uh, we want to go back to Krishna. And Krishna wants to bring us back even more than we want to go back. So here is very clearly explained. This cosmic manifestation is a chance for the conditioned souls to go back home, back to Godhead. But we have to give up the domineering mentality and we have to adopt the servitorship mentality. And really it doesn't matter what position we are in. It may be, as I said before, a big leader but still, the mood is humble servitorship, servant leadership, as uh, His Holiness Bhakti Tita Maharaj explained, that whether you're a leader, whether you're a janitor, the mood is humble servitorship. We try to do everything as a service to Krishna as nicely as we can, thinking ourselves just very humble instruments of the Lord. Whatever I have been given is given on loan. Any moment Krishna can take it away. Any moment our powers will be gone, can be gone if Krishna so desires. So if we have the power to write nicely, we have the power to paint nicely, we have the power to uh, speak nicely, we have the power to dance nicely, we have the power to sew DT outfits nice, whatever that power Krishna has given. And if he chooses, he can take it away. <laughs> Next moment we can become... Uh, um, have a stroke. <laughs> okay, finished. You know, power of speaking is gone. You can't move. You're on the bed. Who knows? Any moment, anything can be taken away from us. So we must always be cognizant and be very humble for whatever gifts that Krishna has given and use them in, in his service, constantly remembering that every moment I'm completely dependent on the Lord to carry out this service. So please, my dear Lord, let me remember you at every moment, praying to your lotus feet to do this service as nicely as I can because I want to please you. I want to please the Vaishnavas. And when we see something being done very nicely by someone, automatically even our heart becomes so happy, isn't it? When we see a beautiful offering or of beautiful preparations on that uh, plate, uh, uh, you know, offered to Krishna, when we see a beautiful uh, DT outfit, when we see beautiful decorations on the DTs or beautiful garlands or anything beautiful, or just say the temple room is thick and span and shining nicely. We look and we say, wow, who has cleaned this? Everything looks so gorgeous, so beautiful. Our hearts become so happy. So when excellent service is done, it brings great happiness to everyone. So we want to do our service like that. We want to do it so nicely that everyone becomes very happy. And you know what? When we make Krishna happy, we become happy. <laughs> so this is why we need to engage very nicely with full heart in Krishna's service. Everything is anyway under the direction of the Lord. We are simply instruments, simply instruments. So we must never become puffed up. We must never become swayed by Maya's power to trick us into thinking, oh, you're something great, you're something special, you're something this, you're something that. Shall I tell you a story about Bhakti Tita Maharaj? Would you like to hear? <laughs> it's a very beautiful story. Maharaj, of course, is highly empowered preacher. 
He had gone to communist Russia, you know, behind the Iron Curtain at great personal risk. He had done so many things, you know, to spread Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada was so pleased with him, so pleased with him. And when he came back, he grabbed hold of Bhakti Tita Maharaj and embraced him. And with great affection, he said, your life is successful. And Maharaj says, you know, he became a little puffed up, you know, he was feeling, oh, ah, I'm something great, a little bit, just a little bit. Next day, when he was reporting some more, you know, achievements and so on, and Tamal Krishna Maharaj was relating all that, Prabhupada was not even looking. Prabhupada was not even looking. And Maharaj was thinking, what's happening? What have I done wrong? What has happened? And as Tamal Krishna was saying, Maharaj was saying, and then he distributed so many Bhagani, and then he did this, and then he went to this part of Russia, and then he, and Prabhupada simply said, Krishna is the doer. Krishna is the doer. Immediately, Bhakti Tita Maharaj understood the lesson that we are not the doers. Krishna is doing everything. I can only be a humble instrument for him. And he, and he relates this pastime <laughs> and says how he learned a very important lesson by Prabhupada saying that. So the battle of Kurukshetra was also fought according to the plan of the Lord. Arjun was saying, no, 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 I don't want to fight. But then he was told, this is a righteous fight. It is ordained by me. I want this fight to happen because I want to establish righteousness. And then he took up the mission of the Lord. And it is said that throughout the battle, he was shooting those arrows with a smile on his face. If one is in full Krishna consciousness and his life is devoted to the Lord's transcendental service, he is perfect. So we want to attain that point. We want to attain that uh, stage of being completely devoted, completely absorbed in the service of the Lord and make our life perfect. This is a rare opportunity in this human form of life. Um, Satya Bama, we can stop the screen share and I would like to see my God family if possible. <laughs> if brave souls can put on their cameras, it'll be so nice, but it's up to you. Anyway, Haribol, <laughs> my humble obeisances, my dear God sister, Savya Datri, Satya Bhama, so nice to see you all. <laughs> Angels <laughs> with halos and wings. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Namrata. So you see, the lessons over here in this purport are so important for all of us to remember and understand and digest and apply to our lives. This is Krishna's plan to take me back to Godhead. There is no other plan. How can I do my best? What should be my endeavor while I'm over here? How can I perfect that service? How can I do it so pleasingly that Guru and Krishna are very happy with me? Vaishnavas are very happy with me. Because remember, without making the Vaishnavas happy, without the blessings of the Vaishnavas, without the blessings of Guru Maharaj, we cannot make any advancement. It's, it's not going to happen. Is just not going to happen. The trick, not trick, I wish. The secret to advancing in devotional service is to please the spiritual master, to please the Vaishnavas. So our endeavor should be to become humble servitors with whatever little, tiny little skills we may have. It doesn't matter. See, there's a story. I'm going to tell you a story. There was a janitor. You know what's a janitor, right? He's the one who sweeps the floors and, you know, keeps the place clean and all that. So there was this company chief and he had just given a talk and he had encouraged all the employees that try to do your best. Think of this company as your company. Do everything, you know, in a very sincere way like that. So this young man, he was just not very educated. He had this job of janitor, but he took that seriously. He said, let me do my corner as nicely as possible. Let me keep everything neat and clean. Let me do my best. So he went above and beyond. He did you know, more than was expected of him. And his supervisor noticed that. Oh, this boy is very responsible. He's very hardworking. So he started giving him little more responsibility, little more responsibility, little more responsibility. And every time the young man responded by doing well, by doing more, by doing well, by doing more. And slowly, 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 you will not believe it. He start, he rose to the position of sub-supervisor, under that supervisor. Then the supervisor himself got some promotion. And then they said, hey, why not promote this man? So he was become, now he was in charge of other people. And then he started thinking, 
how can we make this uh, shop front more attractive for customers? Let's put this, you know, in this window and let's put that and let's put this uh, mannequin here. And let's... so he started thinking how to get more sales. So they promoted him to into a sales position. And slowly this little humble janitor became the regional manager for that company. So my dear brothers and sisters in Bhakti Yoga, we will advance according to the sincerity and the depth and execution of our endeavors. If you are just doing enough to squeak by, <laughs> that's all we will get, you know? Now compare that to the employee who's just watching the clock. He comes in sharp nine, he goes for a cigarette break, 10 o'clock, I have to take my cigarette break. 12 o'clock, I have to go and get, uh, you know, my water uh, bottle filled. Then 12, one o'clock, I have to go for lunch. Then four o'clock, I'm watching. So I'm winding up everything because five o'clock, you know, office closes, right? So he already starts packing up, closing down, putting things, and then five o'clock, gone. So he's just doing just enough to keep his job. Is he going to get a promotion? No brainer. Of course not. He's just going to get by and he's probably going to retire in that position, but he doesn't care because that's, you know, he just takes it that this is just a job. I'm just agree. There's no loyalty. There's no commitment. There's no desire to excel. There's no desire to add value or purpose or meaning to that company. How is he going to do any better? You see? So after coming to Bhakti Yoga, we must consider, I have received a matchless gift. I can go back home, back to Krishna, to the spiritual world. This is what Prabhupada and Prabhupada has sacrificed his life for me to go back home. Our Guru Maharajas are sacrificing their life to teach us all the lessons that we need to learn to go back home. Why should I not do my best? Why should I not endeavor my level best for the day, whatever little bit I can do, so that I can make nice advancement in Bhakti Yoga. And in the end, if Krishna is pleased, may he take me back. Why should we settle for less? So my prayer and my hope is that we all, including myself, I'm preaching to myself over here, try to overcome our anarthas, try to situate ourselves in fixed devotional service, try to become expert in whatever it is we are doing. Follow the plan of the Lord for our life rather than our own <laughs> mental concoction. Make our life perfect and go back home, back to Krishna. So I hope that, uh, okay, I want to share one more thing. This is a very important verse because it goes along with this particular verse. It is um, in the eighth canto. Chapter 6, uh, verse number 32, I believe, because this is another illustration there also. Uh, Srila Prabhupada is giving a beautiful explanation of how the demons are thinking and how devotees understand things. So let's take a look at that verse because I think that's a very important, it has a very strong bearing on this particular verse. Um, my dear uh, Satya Bhama, would you take us to that particular verse? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe I don't have. This is eighth canto, chapter six, and verse number, Mataji. I'm, I'm just looking at. Um, let me see. Yeah. I think it's thirty-two. Okay. Or maybe it's thirty-three. Let me take a look. It's uh, very clearly explaining about in the purport, there's a purport. Okay, I'll have to do a little search. Can you just bear with me for a minute? I, I don't tell it's you any worse. Um, no it's a beautiful uh, purport where uh, Srila Prabhupada is very clearly explaining the difference between demigods and devotees in understanding what is happening in the world today and going according to the plan of the Lord. So let me, um, this has no purpose. Just give me a minute and I will try to find it. Oh, 
Okay, there we go. Sorry. It is verse number 38. Yes, I want to... Um, this is the churning of the milk ocean, you know, the Mandara mountain is being used and both the demons and the demigods are churning, churning, churning that ocean of milk to bring forth the nectar. And here, yes, I would like to read from this part. The omnipotence of the Supreme Lord is proved here. For simply with one hand, he lifted Mandara mountain, the demigods and the demons, and placed them on the back of Garuda and brought them to the ocean of milk. Now the demigods, the devotees, would immediately accept this incident, knowing that the Lord can lift anything, however heavy it might be. But although the demons were also carried along with the demigods, demons, upon hearing of this incident, would say that it is mythological. But if God is all-powerful, why would it be difficult for him to lift a mountain? Since he is floating in numerable planets with many hundreds and thousands of Mandara mountains, why can't he lift one of them with his hands? This is not mythology, but the difference between the believers and the faithless is that the devotees accept the incidents mentioned in the Vedic literatures to be true, whereas the demons simply argue and label all these historical incidents as mythology. This is exactly what Prabhupada is saying in this purport about scientists, you know, speculating and saying this, that, this, that, but never admitting that there is God. Demons would prefer to explain that everything happening in the cosmic manifestation takes place by chance. But demigods or devotees never consider anything to be chance. Rather, they know that everything is an arrangement of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is the difference between the demigods and the demons. So we have been given such a rare opportunity, dear brothers and sisters, to engage in this process of devotional service, to perfect our lives and to go back to Krishna, which is actually our real home. We belong there. We don't belong here. We fell away. We were with Krishna. And we have lost our way. And here we are in this material world struggling with all the different gunas and all the different headaches and all the different problems. But we can make our way back home by this process of bhakti yoga. So my hope and my prayer is that we all really try in our own small, humble, little way to do every little thing. It may be very simple. Yad karoshi, yad ashnashi, yad juhoshi dadasi, yad. Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer, or whatever you give away, or whatever austerities you perform, O son of Kunti, do that as an offering unto me. So no one is barred from performing devotional service. No one. Everyone can do it. All Krishna is asking for is what? Love and devotion. Pashpuram, patram, pushpam. If one offers me with love and devotion of a patram, a leaf, tulsi leaf, pushpam, a flower, halam, fruit, water, toyam, with love and devotion, I will accept it. So in that particular purport, Srila Prabhupada writes, even the poorest man <laughs> can offer any of these things. This is available anywhere all over the world. So all we have to do is become steady in our little seva, whatever little bit it is, and with great love and devotion, offer that to Krishna. And slowly, by hearing more about Krishna, by understanding who am I in relation to Krishna, following the orders of the spiritual master, we can slowly become more and more situated in our real spiritual um, uh, position of loving servitorship to Krishna and finally go back to Krishna. This is my hope and prayer. So thank you all very much for listening so patiently. We can now open up for questions, um, comments, uh, realizations, and uh, of course, corrections as always. <laughs> I made some mistake. 
please help me to correct myself. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Mataji, for the wonderful class. Devotees, if you have any questions, any comments, realizations, please unmute yourself and ask. Or just type in the chat box and I will read it for you. Thank you. Hare Krishna Mataji, I would like to ask a question. <laughs> um, you know, you mentioned that we should do everything for the pleasure of Krishna, as in, you know, um, and uh, like we should do everything for Krishna and for Krishna's pleasure. But so many times, because, uh, you know, the pleasure is derived from the devotional service as well. And sometimes devotees get, you know, too much engrossed. And because it just, I think, the service itself is a pleasure giving basically you know so so many times it happens that we might be so addicted to things which you know because we know that you know it's just um because i just feel that you know how can we just remember that whatever service we are doing it's only it should be only focused and um, it should be only for the pleasure of of the lordships rather than um, because you know, our pleasure is just the byproduct of what we do for Krishna, basically. But sometimes mm -hmm. byproduct goes, you know, it overtakes the everything else and we're just so much enthusiastic about things. So how can we, you know, balance that and always remember that our activities are only focused um, for the Lordship's pleasure? What's wrong in becoming ecstatic in Krishna's service? <laughs> <laughs> we want more ecstatic devotees. We want more happy devotees. That's the best advertisement for this Hare Krishna movement. You don't want to be dull, moral, mm, taciturn, just, you know, going about things, you know, oh, I'm very stoic. I've got a stiff upper lip. I will not show how happy I am. I will... That's not the mood. Come on. <laughs> Satya Baba, why should you not be ecstatic? Any reason? No, you should be, yeah, but so many times, you know, you just... I just personally feel that you, you're just, um, I think, too happy and uh, too enthusiastic about things and other things that maybe I think you're living in the different world or you're just going crazy type person or you're insane. It just... <laughs> we want insane devotees who are insanely in love with Krishna. <laughs> We want devotees who are absolutely mad with ecstasy. Please, let's have some. Show me where they are. I'm going to run and catch some dust from their lotus feet. <laughs> so if you're ecstatic in devotional service, Satya Brahma, I'm coming running to UK. I want some dust from your lotus feet. Coming to you, Mataji, to Slovenia. <laughs> why? Why we should? Why, I, I don't understand this. We want ecstasy. We want ecstatic devotee. Not that we are looking for ecstasy. But if we become ecstatic in Krishna's devotional service, we become truly happy in Krishna's service. What is wrong? That's, you know, that's Radharani is showering you with mercy. You know, Jayananda Prabhu, he was so absorbed in Krishna's devotional service and he was so happy doing all his different services. There was a person who was watching and he says, oh my God, if the garbage man of this temple, he was lifting the garbage in, in great happiness, is so happy, there's really something to this Hare Krishna movement. This is a true fact. I'm not making it up. I'm not making it up. So we want devotees who are so uh, in love with Krishna that they're doing all their services, you know, just in, a, in, in, in so much love of Krishna that that radiates that radiates in the form of uh, bliss and contentment and happiness and joy and 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 uh, wanting to share that. Hey, come on, you also taste this nectar. It's wonderful. Come, join the bandwagon. We want ecstatic devotees. We want devotees who are so happy in their services that it becomes very obvious that they are tasting some nectar and then others become curious and say, hey, what's going on over here? I want to join this Hare Krishna movement. They're so happy all the time. 
So I don't know whether I'm hearing you right or whether I have understood your question. I don't know whether you're feeling that some services are very exciting and make you enthusiastic and other services make you feel like real bored or you know not very interested and it's a drag and so you're sort of comparing the two and think oh I, I like the service but I don't like this or something is that the case or what's going on no this no that is not the case I just feel like so many times like for example you're making a feast for Krishna okay it's just making a lunch and making nice items for Krishna you feel like when you offer that you just you the you, you feel really good about it that you know you have offered something nice and it just so I just feel that that time you should have a feeling that I'm not doing it because it makes me happy I'm doing it because you know Krishna will like it that he has nice you know meal basically so I'm just trying to say that because you know it just it just gives you happiness basically so many times when you you know when your home date is basically you dress them and they look very happy and when you look at them they you look very you know you feel very happy about it that wow they're looking so beautiful <laughs> and it just and that time I feel like no it's not about me it's about them they should be looking happy you know beautiful because they are the Lord because. I think you're experiencing ecstasy simply by engaging in devotional service and then you're see, feeling fearful. Why am I feeling so much ecstasy? <laughs> but when Krishna is happy, you become happy automatically. Srila Prabhupada, when he was asked, how do we know Krishna is happy? He said, you will become happy. So if you're feeling happy after dressing your deities nicely or after making a nice offering, what is wrong with that? No, nothing. There is no wrong, nothing wrong. But I, I just feel like you know the the mindset should be that should be the, for the pleasure of the Lord rather than yeah. I just feel guilty about it. That uh, am I doing it for myself or am I doing it for them? <laughs> you don't have to worry so much about it as long as you keep engaging in devotional service. As long as your motivation is how can I do this nicely to please Guru and Krishna. There is nothing wrong in feeling happy about a nice service that you have done. You know, when, when Krishna is happy, we become happy too. On the other hand, when Krishna is not happy or Guru Maharaj is not happy, <laughs> there's no way we can become happy. Mm. Feeling happy after performing a service, wonderful. Tell me how you did it. <laughs> I want some of that. <laughs> And don't feel guilty. Oh, I should not feel happy about this. It's not about. That's all. Just you know, you're 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 letting your mind uh, just interfere with all that, and you know, letting it spoil. You know what is genuine uh, heart to heart connection. From what I'm hearing you say, you're offering so much love and devotion, a feast, or you're doing something very nicely to please the Lord, and reciprocating with you then when the lord is re reciprocating with you is no 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 i don't want this because i don't want to feel it's about me that's like saying krishna go away <laughs> why would you want to do that that's but nice welcome to check with the with the you know your heart will find complete satisfaction when you talk about this to guru maharaj and he clears all your doubts so i highly recommend that you present this because I may not be able to understand you uh, completely or correctly, and maybe I'm only seeing half the picture. And so I encourage you to uh, clarify this with Guru Maharaj so that you know your your mind is at peace. Thank you, thank you, Mataji. That's very useful. <laughs> Krishna. Krishna, you both. Devotees, if you have any questions, please um, do uh, do ask. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Thank you so much, uh, Mataji. Very nice class. <clears throat> Very nice reminders. Um, yeah, we should always uh, be on the ground. Uh, even if we get little, little success, we'll get, uh, um, we think that everything we are doing, especially myself. <clears throat> but I have to learn how to be on the ground always. And, uh, you know, remember that uh, <clears throat> Krishna is the doer. Thank you so much, Mataji, for the reminder. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm preaching to myself here most of the times, honestly. So easy, you know, to think, oh, I'm doing something great. I'm doing something, you know, uh, fantastic or special. There's no question of that because Krishna says, I am ability in man. 
You can only be an instrument for my will to manifest through you. If I wish, I can take that power away next moment. You see? So mm -hmm. always be cognizant of that, that every moment, what moment? Every nanosecond, we are dependent on Krishna for breathing, for blinking our eyes, for swallowing, for speaking, for everything. So where is the question <laughs> of feeling fucked up about everything? I'm so helpless. If Krishna desires, next moment, I can be, you know, a little blood clot can travel up and then finish. I can get a stroke and all my powers, you know, can be taken away. So where's the question of feeling, oh, I did this or I did that? Because Krishna is actually giving that ability. And only Krishna can allow that to continue or he can take it away. So we are ever dependent completely dependent, totally dependent on the mercy of Krishna. Yes, Mataji. Totally agree. Thank you so much. Thank you. Praying for a wonderful Pushpabhi Shekam and Chapan Bhog. Yes, Mataji. Thank you so much. Send us pictures. Yeah, sure, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna, Namrata. Namrata means humility. What a beautiful name you have. Everyone gives your name another, uh, another. He calls it Namrata. Attraction for the name. So you have got two beautiful meanings to your name now. <laughs> Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada. All glories to our beloved Gurudev. Please accept my humble obeisances to um, Mataji. And, and all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Guru um, So my question was, uh, it is a little bit related to what Satyabhama Mataji was talking about. Um, you were saying that uh, uh, when we are in the moment, whatever we like, we choose our service in accordance to that. Uh, uh, whatever dislikes, whatever likes are there, of uh, uh, hobbies and all. So, uh, 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 whatever we are interested in, in short, like we choose our uh, uh, service like that. So, does that mean that we are trying to choose what we like rather than what? Uh, uh, I, I mean, um, maybe sometimes you know there might be an instance when. Uh, your guru uh, or your seniors they are asking for uh, uh, they are asking to do service which uh, which you are not so much confident about or which maybe you would not like so how do we how, how should we uh, you know take up that thing should we take it as a chat or well, initially, when we are baby Hare Krishnas, you know, people will not do that to us. They will, you know, our seniors, temple authorities, and so on, they will try to engage, you know, depending on the person's likes and dislikes, because they want to encourage you. Only at a surrendered stage will the guru ask for something like that. It's when the disciple is really surrendered and really willing to, that's very rare and it's very exalted and it's a very difficult stage to attain. Not every one of us can, you know, reach that stage so easily or quickly. It takes time and takes surrender. Um, but only when one is really surrendered, then the guru will say, okay, I want you to do this service. That's a, the difference, you know, first class devotee, second class devotee, there are different gradations that, you know, he's to do whatever the guru asks so it's a very exalted stage and uh, people will not demand that of you right away it's as we progress in bhakti yoga as we show that we're willing to submissively follow the order of the guru and we prove ourselves in little things then bigger things will come so you don't have to have that so, uh, so, oh my gosh, I might get some service and it might be overwhelming or it might be something I just, you know, have no taste for or I don't like to do or something like that. That's, uh, that's not going to happen, you know, and just like that. It's, it's a slow process and it will be something that is asked of very surrender, 
exalted disciples. Uh, so I think you can rest assured that nobody will give you something, you know, that you don't like to do or test you like that. That's no, I think, uh, that's my experience, at least in the, you know, the few temples I've been in in America. I really don't know how the the how the situation is in India. So I cannot comment what is happening at your local level. But in general, if there's a sensible person, you know, as temple authority, he or she will see to it that people are happily doing what they like to do before making demands of, you know, you go now on book distribution, you go and, you know, do this and do that. That's at a much later stage. Uh uh, I have just came to one, uh, came across just one uh, local temple. So I think uh, not too much aware about the uh, what what India is uh, doing in you know distributing services. But uh, uh, I was uh, actually asking, should we take it as a challenge or something like that? Yes, uh, but yes, you answered it uh, very nicely and uh, satisfactorily that this might not come at the initial level. You might need a mature bhakti stage to uh, face that thing. A oh, very excellent leader or a temple president may be able to see that you are capable of much, much more. And he or she may suggest, hey, Namrata, why don't you do this? And so, you know, they might see it a very intelligent person if you just keep telling them to you know fold the clothes they're going to get bored out of their minds you know she needs something more challenging she needs something more uh, intellectually uh, stimulating and they might put you on to something else so if you are feeling up to feeling hey this is great you know even though it's new uh, go for it please uh, I was just uh, asking because uh, I uh, in in our local meeting uh, for Mataji's, the it, it it was during it was before Janmashtami, so uh, it, uh, the the senior devotees they took a meeting of Mataji's and they were lotting some services, and uh, I don't know maybe maybe women here are shy and they you know don't. Uh, willingly come forward so they might be you know just giving them services or oh, you do this you do this you do that but uh, i felt like that that maybe some might not be uh, interested and still they are giving so i wasn't aware uh, that they are they are uh, trying to find out what their interests are or they're not or they're just giving it out so i wasn't aware yeah, so this is a big problem, you know, poor communication. And many, many, many of us women, we are not very assertive. We are not very clear in our communication. We are not willing to say what we like, what we don't like. We just sit there, mom, and the other person doesn't know, you know, is she happy with this service? Does she like this service? Does she not like this service? Is she just doing it because I've given it to her? So definitely we need to break down some communication barriers. We need to have dialogue where the women, maybe they'll be too shy to speak to a man. Maybe they need, you know, a group meeting where senior Mataji's can sit down and ask them, how, how you feel about your service? How, how you like being over here? What are the things you think you would like to do? I think a very personal approach is now needed rather than, you know, just hurting everybody and saying you do this and you do that that's so impersonal for one thing and that's really not a good mood for for you know every person is so special and every person is so unique so when they come they should immediately be connected with someone who will take a personal interest in them who will be like a mother you know and guide them and help them and be there for them to discuss their problems or their issues so that they feel Someone cares about me. I'm not just a pair of hands here, you know? So many places the mood is, this is just another pair of hands. Oh, are you coming for the service or are you not coming for the service? And if you don't show up for the service, they make a big face. 
you know it's like all they care about is you come be, what is happening in your personal life your uh, child had an accident or you know you yourself fell very sick that all is not even considered it's like you know coming for service oh my god oh my god who do your service <laughs> you feel so miserable like am i only a pair of hands coming to do that service so we really need to improve our personal communications our personal relationships with devotees and have you know temples have to do a lot of devotee care we really have to take care of our devotees and i really am concerned about this that every devotee even if they are very especially if they are new they really need you know they're babies we have to nurture them we have to protect them we have to guide them we have to help them and we have to give them so much love and support and care and affection and spend time with them so that they feel oh wow finally i've come to a place where i feel like this is my family this is my home so my prayer is that we do all this work and make our temples welcoming places for everyone <laughs> yes mother ji you are very true uh, yes here in uh, when i visited the uh, local temple i did i did feel a kind of uh, communication barriers somewhere uh, in some iskon temples where they have you know mentorships uh, and men they do have mentors uh, where you know juniors they do share uh, what what is maybe their material life maybe their sadhana barriers or whatever they they have uh, they have you know somebody to consult to so yes. in uh, some of the temples especially in india not all of them have this uh, facilities so yeah this is a little bit <laughs> we have a lot of work we are just 55 years old <laughs> we have yeah. not all that long so we all have a lot of work to do we are not perfect and she looked out Says to step up and you know do things. You know, just look at the first generation of devotees. What all they did, what sacrifices they made, what Herculean feats they did, what level of surrender they showed to Prabhupada, and they moved heaven and earth. Just think what sacrifices the first generation made. That today you and I have a temple. Today you and I don't have to worry when we go to a temple. We know we are going to get prasadam. We just know it because it's there. There's so much abundance of prasad. But who did all that hard work? The first generation. I believe our generation has to work hard on relationships at all levels, in the temples between leaders and and uh, and the disciples, between um, families, between you know friends, between brothers and sisters, between mother and child. You know, parent-child conflicts, brother-sister conflicts, husband-wife conflicts, leadership, and uh, you know the the congregation conflict. There's so much conflicts happening that unless we work on this issue, our our iskon needs to become strong by working on relationships, so that we have a very strong uh, congregation, strong families, strong temples. Then we will be able to attract people who will come and feel sheltered. But if we are bickering and quarrelling and cribbing and fighting and doing this and that, people are going to think, "Oh, well, hmm, like that." So we have work to do. We have a lot of work to do. Yes, yes. Together. <laughs> you know, they say, "Be change you want to see in the world." So remember, you know, when I first joined that first temple, I was like aghast. I said, "Oh my God." is this how i'm going to be 30 40 years from now please krishna no i don't want to become like this cribbing fighting bitter angry crabby grumpy mean spirited foul fine oh it was so difficult for me to see certain people like that and i was just like so uninspired and i kept thinking what to do now and i remember talking to my gbc and i remember him telling me all right you be a good example okay like, okay all right so work cut out right there you know we cannot change others we can only change ourselves 
So, um, Mataji, Satyabama Mataji had to drop off for a laptop crash. So, um, I'm just taking over her place. So, devotees, any more questions or comments uh, or realizations? Uh, Hari to say something. Yeah, can I ask Mataji? Is it okay? It's 12. Yes, yes, please, please. Please accept all obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to our beloved Gurudev. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances to Mataji. Um, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Mataji, for the very nice class. Always very inspirational class. Thank you so much. Um, I have one question, Mataji, like uh, how to balance like uh, humility as well, like, you know, not putting yourself like too low. Sometimes like if you're too humble, like when you're really interacting with the materialistic people or outside anywhere, uh, they might take it like a uh, very differently. So how should we really balance that? Like, you know, Humility doesn't mean being non-assertive or letting people push you around or, or, or bully you or, you know, take advantage of your sweetness and kindness and soft nature or anything like that. We can be humble, but we can also be assertive. And that is difficult. You know, many of us women have a very hard time asserting ourselves. We are either aggressive, we get angry and we shout and we scream and we yell at us and we... Or, Tassel, you know, we like, oh, how can I say this? How can I? You know, we veer between being childlike, that is passive, or angry, aggressive. What we need to do is learn to be assertive. That means clearly setting the boundaries. What I'm you know, able to do, what I'm not able to do. I'm able to come at this time. I'm not able to come at that time. You know, being very clear about what you can and cannot do for you know, especially materialistic people, we have to be very clear because remember, materialistic people are infected with the mood of Kali. They want to push, they want to exploit, they want to abuse, they want to, you know, get their way, they want to. So we have to be very, very, very careful and set up strong boundaries so that people cannot do that to us. You have a responsibility and a right to protect yourself. It's part of self-care. Mm -hmm. remember we have to take care of not just our bodies we have to take care of our mind our emotions and everything to protect spiritual health so humility doesn't mean um, um, allowing someone to use you exploit you push you bully you no mm -hmm. not at all you can be assertive and you can be humble too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mataji. So having that, an yes, Mataji. Okay. Yes, a little bit like having an agenda, like you know, okay, what you want to do, like what you're available. So you have to be very assertive in that, but as well you have to be very humble. Yeah, you can be polite, you can be courteous, and you can be humble, but at the same time you can be very clear because people will push you if they see yeah. your Oh, can you do this one more? Can you do one more of the can you? You know, they just pile on. And, you know, they say that people will treat you according to how you allow them to treat you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you know, people just push the boundaries. If they can get away with it, why not? You know? So, we have to understand what our priorities are, what our responsibilities are. You have a home, you have children, you have you know, things to do. And so you can say, I can only come from this time to this time and I can only bring these food items. I can you know, do this, 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 and that's all, I'm sorry. And every time they make a demand, you can say, so sorry, with a smile. I'm really sorry, that's not possible, <laughs> finished. No arguments, no making excuses or explanations because the moment you start explaining, they will try to find a loophole. So remember, when you're being assertive, don't give explanations. Simply mm -hmm. state the case. Okay. That cut it short. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice tips, Mataji. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so it's much. It's my job. God <laughs> <laughs> has told me to make my profession my seva. 
you know, I'm a therapist, right? Ah, uh, yes, I heard in the calls. Yeah, yeah, I need to take yeah. a lot of tips from you. <laughs> yeah, I need you. to take a lot of tips from you. <laughs> How no. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, no. <laughs> Just let me know what is. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice question, Sudha. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, any more questions? I think uh, there are no more questions, Mataji. I think we can end the call. Okay. <clears throat> thank so you so thank much. Thank you Mataji, all very much. Yes, and uh, uh, time today. Um, thank you so much. Srila Prabhupada so ki jai, Guru Maharaj ki jai. Thank you so much, Mataji. Thank you all, dear devotees, for very patiently listening and tolerating me. I know that some of my answers may not be pleasing or may not be complete because I can only speak up to the level of my knowledge and realization, which isn't much. <laughs> so I humbly request you to forgive me if I have disappointed you or, uh, you know, in some way you're not too happy with the answers of the discussion. Please forgive me and please pray for me to do better. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Please uh, accept my humble obeisances. Glories to Srila Prabhupada. Glories to you. Mataji, you're really on point with your class. Excellent. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part. You're on point with your class, Mataji. Oh. <laughs> you're on point. <laughs> Very Thank simple. you. Thank Thanks. you for encouraging me in my service. Thank and you. Blessings. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.